Welcome to the Determinant Courtcast. I hope you enjoy it. Please take a moment and jot down the definition of the determinant, please. By definition, the determinant is a scalar quantity representing a certain defined alternating sum of products of elements of a square matrix, one from each row and column. So basically what that's saying is that we're going to get a scalar value um, representing a certain combination of sums and products. So for example, if we have a two by two matrix A, B, C, D, then the determinant is equal to the product of our diagonal AD and subtract that from a product of our um, BC. Now I know that definition can be pretty confusing, so let's uh, take a look at this in, in a different context. Basically what we're going to do to find the determinant is we're going to find the product of the down diagonal. So AD. So we're going to get A times D for our product. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the product of our up diagonal. C times D. And then by definition we're going to look at the um, alternating sum of products. So we're going to subtract those two values. And then that's going to give us our determinant. So A times D is AD minus our product of our up diagonal, BC. So if you notice, this is the same value that we got in our definition, but I think looking at it in terms of this makes the process a little less confusing. So again, the product of our down diagonal minus the product of our up diagonal, and that's how we find the determinant. So let's take a look at example one to uh, illustrate this process. Again, we're going to look at uh, our product of our down diagonal. So we're going to find the determinant of this two by two matrix, three, negative five, negative four, and six. So the product of our down diagonal is three times six, which is 18. And then we're going to find the product of our up diagonal. So negative four times negative five, and that's going to give us a positive 20. And then to find the determinant, we're just going to take our down diagonal, which is uh, our 18, and we're going to subtract that from our up diagonal. And so 18 minus 20 gives us a negative 2. So the determinant of this uh, particular 2 by 2 matrix is negative 2. And again, it's a scalar quantity, so we're getting a value that uh, relates all the elements of our matrix in a certain way. Um, and uh, we're going to take a look at uh, what this is useful later on in the corncast. Okay, so in example two here, we're going to take a look at finding the determinant of a three by three matrix. Now the process is similar in some ways, but different in others. Um, we're still going to find the products of our down diagonal. So 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. Times 2 is going to give us a negative 56. Now where that process changes from a 2 by 2 to a 3 by 3 matrix is right here. We're going to get 3 times 0, but what ends up happening is we end up leaving a lot of uh, these elements of our 3 by 3 matrix out. So here's a little trick to help you out with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at column one and I'm going to copy column one to the right of my three by three matrix. So four, five, one, I'm going to copy it again to the right, four, five, and one. Now the reason why I did that is notice basically what it did is it took this one and moved it over here. So if I follow this down diagonal right here, notice how I'm able to get the three elements like I did in my first down diagonal. So 3 times 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. Now the same thing happens when I work my down diagonal from the 1 here. I get 1 times 5, but it doesn't have anything to go with it. Well, really that 5 came from right here. So again, with my trick, I'm going to copy now column 2 to the right of column 1. So 3, negative 7, negative 2. 
So again, 3, negative 7, and negative 2. So I'm going to copy those first two columns to the right of the matrix. And again, the reason why I'm doing that is so now I'm able to complete my down diagonals. 1 times 5 is 5, times negative 2 is going to give me a negative 10. So if you notice, and you look really carefully, I was able to relate all nine elements of my matrix in my down diagonals. So now, again, the definition is to, to find the uh, sum of the products. So there's my product, so now I'm going to find the sum of that. So 56 plus 0 minus 10 is going to give me a negative 66. So there's the sum of my products of my down diagonal. Now, because I was able to copy column 1 and copy column 2 over here, now my up diagonal is going to be pretty easy. 1 times negative 7 is negative 7, times 1 is negative 7. Now, because I copied column 1, now I have my 4 here, so negative 2 times 0 is 0. 0 times 4 is also 0. And lastly, my column 2, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 times 3 is 30. So again, the sum of my um, products, so negative 7 plus 0 is negative 7, plus 30 is going to give me a positive 23. So positive 23 is the sum of my up diagonals. Now again, if you look carefully, I was able to relate all nine elements of my matrix together. And uh, so now to complete the process of my determinant, I'm going to take my um, product, my sum of my products of my down diagonal, negative 66, and subtract that from the sum of my products of my up diagonal, 23. And that result is going to give me a negative 89. And that number right there is that scalar uh, quantity that satisfies the conditions of the definition of my determinant for this particular 3x3 three three matrix. So again, as you look over this, please make sure that you understand that this is quite a bit different than a 2x2 two two matrix. But note that if you follow this little trick, it's pretty much the same thing. Down diagonals, add them up. Up diagonals, product, add them up. And then subtract the two uh, sums together and you'll get your determinant. So please uh, take time to really fully understand how to do this 3x3 three three matrix. Now you're probably at this point asking yourself, what is this good for? Well, quite simply, the determinant basically determines if a matrix has an inverse or not. So please take a moment and jot down this uh, part of the definition of our determinant here. A matrix is invertible if and only if its determinant is non-zero. And what the word invertible means is that it has an inverse, and non-zero obviously means it doesn't equal zero. So again, the determinant determines if a matrix has an inverse or not. That's what it's good for. So let's take a look at this matrix right here. Again, following our process, our down diagonal. So 2 times 9 is 18. Our up diagonal, so negative 6 times negative 3 is 18. And then finding the determinant, so our product of our down diagonal, 18, minus the product of our up diagonal, 18, gives us 0. So by this definition, this 2 by 2 matrix right here does not have an inverse. And that's kind of special, because if you remember from the last corn cast, if I was to try to find the inverse of this, I'd have to multiply it by my um, variable matrix, and I'd have to see if it's equal to my identity matrix. And uh, to be quite honest with you, this process was long and tedious, and it would be nice to know if it had one before you even started that process. So because we found a zero, then I would not have to continue this process. Now let me take a second and just show you why this doesn't work. 2 times a is 2a. Negative 3 times c, c is negative 3c. And that has to equal 1. Now I'm going to skip the other part of the matrix right here and go on to row 2, column 1. So negative 6 times a is negative 6a. 9 times c is a positive 9c. And that part would have to equal 0. Now look what happens when I try to eliminate my a's right here. If I multiply by 3, I'm going to get 6a minus 9c is equal to 3. 
And when I add this, something very unique happens. Not only do my A's cancel, but my C's also cancel, resulting in 0. 0 plus 3 is 3, and as you guys know, that this is a false statement. So I would have to go through all this work right here just to come up with no solution. And if it has no solution, then that matrix does not have an inverse. So I don't know about you, but it looks like to me that finding the determinant saved me a lot of time. Because I don't know about you, but doing all this work would make me sad just to find out that it had no solution. From doing just this little bit amount of work right here said I didn't have to go through all of this. So that's what the determinant is good for. All right, now let's take a look at example three here. Now these will go pretty quick. Because if you notice, this uh, matrix right here is the same matrix in example one. So does the following matrix have an inverse? Well, if you recall, the determinant that we calculated for this matrix was negative 2. And as you know, negative 2 is not equal 0. So to answer the question, yes, this matrix does have an inverse. And the reason why it's yes, well, negative 2 does not equal 0. And so if I was to ask you to find the inverse of this, you could do so. All right, example four. Does this following three by three matrix have an inverse? Well, again, recall that this is the same matrix that was in example two. And if you recall, the determinant for this particular matrix was negative 89. So the answer to the question, since negative 89 does not equal zero, yes. This matrix does have an inverse because negative 89 does not equal zero. Now let's say, for example, we did get a determinant equal to zero here. Well, no, you don't have an inverse, so you would not have to find it. And uh, so that takes care of what we need to know about a determinant. So I bet you're as surprised as this chicken here that that's all there is to determinants.